this is what should insert the head. Um, but it occurs to us that no one has ever really been taught how to head it. And thanks to socioeconomic circumstances, it's highly doubtful that anybody ever come across one. They say it like they're wrong. No? Nope. So, I think thing number one, number one to realize about head because it's a very, very short length weapon. There's a kick, there's a hand, there's a knee, there's an elbow, a head. It's a good place right now. So, what we'll be doing tonight, among everything else, is using you in your head. Don't go kind of the front door looking to put that in. You'll end up getting yourself hurt. The other thing to realize is you're attacking someone with the most violent part of your body. So, you know, I was going to say short of. Attacking someone with your scrotum. <laughs> there is no way you can be more vulnerable, so use it and have it your um, Lastly, we'll tell her So, literally, we're going to get the pad in a second. But first of all, practice from sterile. Just come in here and let me move forward. Drop your head, center your head, and center your legs. You'll be told in other places, depending on the side lines. The problem is that you're in danger of getting a nose in the eye, which is actually more unpleasant than embarrassing. You will have a good time with yourself. So, let me zoom in. Fix your body shape right and just walk. Back is head. If you want a face case, grab a face case, but certainly at least grab a pad. When you grab a pad, then practice putting the body into it. What's more important is the structure behind it than the impact. So, you shouldn't be half mapping yourself out. You should just work on getting your body to line up behind your head. Does this make sense? Go. And let's say one of the corners of your hair when you're not around, your windows peak in the dead center. The other thing is, you're not a giraffe. Just don't do it. It's silly. Yeah, that's a that male um, So try, as you move in, if you want, you can also Draw across. You've got to know how to split the road. The kind of situation you're going to find is that you're going to be able to come here from my own side. Four. 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 So, again, make sure you're going to have. If you want to add the body into it, just stack. What you want to be looking at here is just practicing moving your partner. So don't keep banging your head off the wall. Practice just moving them in your body. You know, just muscle and you can say, you know, work that out again with your brains. I haven't spent out of this. Let's make yourself aware of this. And practice going to the bottom. So, this is something we do use. Yeah, it does turn out to be an obvious. It doesn't turn out to be an obvious. So, try not to. sitting there knocking Kempo out at them, stitching my loaf and run. Spit. Uh, yeah, do you like that? Yeah. Good commit. Okay, <laughs> with that in mind. Um, so let's move into something. Yeah, that's good. So, left lapel grab, 
and rent much. We'll start from the middle position. So, as he pulls, he's pulling my energy forward. This is going to incline me to step. As I step, I double block. Now, depending on how hard he pulls me, this hand is a great raise to go through there. It doesn't matter. This hand protects me against the punch. This hand, wherever it's going, is breaking his structure, breaking his, the power, I suppose, the, the power core from the punch. So, good. From there, I'm going to drop an elbow. As I drop an elbow, I'm going to drop my weight. As I do that, I'm going to start flicking it around, and you'll see very suddenly this line is open. So, by all means, use your head. Come up and under. Curl back, bring it down. From here, we're familiar with here. Knees. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Four. Happy? Move from the other side. Can move back a bit. What? Can you move back a bit? Because I can't actually get all of you on camera. Thank you. Much better. <laughs> Much better. I love it. So, he will 
learn one of two ways. He will learn with a bent arm or a straight arm. If it's a bent arm, we're in the We know what to do here. This is our finish. Let's learn for a straight arm in this case. The arm will be up here, he'll land there. So, from here is an opportunity to go into an actual good standing lock. As with everything else, it has three dimensions. One is this, one is this, and one is this. Use all three. Now the thing is, as I'm doing this too, Daryl, I somehow need to trap him to, to prevent him walking away. So from here, I'm going to step right in and drop. Remember what we were talking about last week, where break his structure and drop, and this isolates his joint. From here, as I'm literally sandwiching him on top of my thigh, grab the back of his hand, turn it slightly, bring it in and over. So it's not going straight across the shoulder line, but put his fingers behind his ear. And finally, simply to add a little, or sorry, to curtail his movement a little more, I'm going to get my thumb, feel along your jawline, there's a little bump. That bump as it goes in is where your salivary gland sits, shove your thumb in under there. So. Jesus, where's his jaw? It's the big square thing that you Italians don't have. <laughs> the thumb in over there, and then we shut to there. What this means is, if Daryl starts to try to turn towards me to take pressure off, <laughs> he gets a thumb in the jaw. And if, he, if he pushes away, he increases the pressure on his own shoulder. This technique's name is piercing mandible. Now there's a mandible, we're piercing it. Happy? Let's take a look at it, look at it with an amount of smoothness. Although not too much. One, two. Draw a circle. This brings him down. From here, step in. Everything's nice and tight. Keep the mandible, put the lock on. If you want to disengage, cross steps. Okay? Go. Change your partner. Base drop. By the way, it's LCA. Yes, like a really good person. So, boom. Open it up. From here, this time, you're not doing a roll or a drag. You are literally, as I said, you may knee if you want, if not, there's still a gauge step from here. And very much like in school, it's like a compass. Draw a circle with your foot. So, because of the position you're in, this time you're using a rotation principle, let's say, to break this structure. They'll either follow you or they'll bend, depending on how flexible they are. Daryl tends to, tends to follow you. From here, I used to call this a pimp grip. He literally sit his hand into your hand up. It's like a pimp king. Because remember the Starsky and Hush movie, Snoop Dogg's character? <laughs> that, think that, okay? It's a much nicer grip because suddenly you're not kind of load bearing with a thumb joint around it. It sits, it sits into your hand, everything runs nice. Lastly, as you're sandwiching, you're not trying to sandwich his upper arm against your leg. You're literally trying to isolate the shoulder joint, which means you need to sandwich somewhere in the chest area, about there. So about there is good. If you're in this position, you can do a whole load of different things, but you cannot show the lock. So you need to be in here. Yes? Oh yeah. The other thing is, as you have your piercing mandible on, your three dimensions are one, two, three. They all come together by trying to put his fingers in. Now, you can grab mandible. If that's not working for you, put your hand inside your thigh. It works just fine as well. It's a cheat, but it works. Okay? One. Happy? Go. To go into a lock. It's either going to go this way, it's going to go this way, or it's going to go this way. So, in reality, from a standing position, it's difficult enough to make anything like this work as anything more than a takedown or an overbalance. So, well, yes, you know, if we had something like that, brace down there, move them around, but we'd be moving into a throw. So, you'll see that turn up on the ground a lot, not standing. We can bring him into this position. We have a, I'm going to do this appallingly now, but kind of like Edo style, yeah. Chiyonagi. We have what we would call something like a key throw or a key lock. But we leave that for another day simply because the break fall is kind of quite <laughs> unforgiving. And maybe some of you wouldn't necessarily be the best. I was like, oh. <laughs> in the best position to take that. So we'll move on to wrist locks very right quickly. So again, wrist locks have the three dimensions. In the case of a wrist lock, they're quite explicit. So in the case of a wrist lock, the three dimensions are one, this is your rotation, two, this cancels depth. So in this case, you're not back up massing him. You're just folding his fingers down at the low of his arm. 
And three, there's this kind of twist here as well, where the hand is kind of twisted that way. So this will take you a couple of seconds to, to get a hang of when you do it on a partner. We start simple. Gerald grabs my collar. So in this case, I'm going to, re I'm going to move before Daryl attacks. I'm going to step in, my right hand, and my hand, like the tip of an elbow, be from leg direct, and I can insert kicks in there. But I really say, just move in, club roll for the elbow, that's what you have there. So if something's apt to happen, you need that. For whatever reason, let's just highly idealize this. We have his hand. For some reason, magical reasons, grip breaks, his hand is in this position. I put my fingers inside there. As I step out into this circle, I turn his hand so it's palm up. And I want to fold it down along his body. And then literally with your partner, chat them through and go, right, what hurts, what doesn't. You know, does that hurt or is it just annoying? Can you bend your arm like that? There's something wrong there. How about if I fold this way? That's pretty bad, but can you bend your arm up? Can you twist your arm up? Okay, something going wrong there. And eventually, that, that kind of three dimensions will become apparent to you. So can you bend your hand out of there? No. <laughs> so there's that third dimension. Okay? Work through that. This is a component of a technique, but this is a fantastic way to transmit that principle before we get sexy. Okay? So, once again. He grabs, I step in, I grab. Here's that circle that we draw again. And from here, as I said, just work which way it's going to go. Yes? Go. Talk about kind of our initial entry, so magic happens, Daryl's hand opens. Right. So, chi, pull, right. <laughs> if Daryl decides to kind of lock himself up, with that way. If I have very, very little kind of good body movement, I'm fine, there's not much happening here. So, number one, exaggerate the circle that your, your legs follow. And number two, exaggerate the circle that Daryl's hand follows. You'll suddenly find everything falls into place quite nicely. A lot of the classical styles will tend to stand this way, because what they're doing is they're engaging their back hip and kind of their center of their body into their lock. So rather than just sitting there kind of fiddling away this way, if I can get everything in, I can put Daryl into a bit of pain. Um, the other thing is, I don't know how, I haven't thought of a great way to explain this yet. Barring maybe I'm in a car airplane helicopter, but steering wheels turn that way. Think about planes, there's the kind of back forward tilt and helicopters have this really weird. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> Lastly, yeah, it's a, like I said, I don't have my credit for this one yet. It's a work in progress. <laughs> Keep your fingers out of the joint. So, this is quite painful for Daryl. If I put my fingers in and do the same thing, stand up, Daryl is in pretty much no discomfort. This is great at seminars. Where you're an instructor, you don't trust her, you don't like her, like you're ready now to sell this. <laughs> but less useful. Thank Jesus, Allah. <laughs> but less useful in a martial context. So we step in, exaggerate your circles, engage your back hip. The other thing is, this is not a great position for him to be in. That's a better one. Kind of pull him onto it. We've now isolated the joint by breaking his structure. Put everything in there and bring it down. Keep your fingers out of the joint. So give that a quick shot and we'll move on quick. Right? Yeah, another look. Now, the what if on this could be that I applied this in expertly and Daryl bent his elbow out of it. It could not. In many, many ways, this is a preferable look. You know, it could be as simple as I decide instead of a big wide circle, I'm going to turn it on this way. So what I'm looking for is this shape here. This S shape, some will call it a gooseneck knock, lock. I think I can either call it Nikia, which means like seconds technique. So, from here, for whatever reason, allow the elbow to bend up and bring the whole lock horizontal. So now our wrist is isolated this way. The three dimensions of this lock are one, two, three. Three is kind of bringing the palm up. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay? So as you have all of this on, take your own grip. I have really big hands, so I can pretty much grab the back of this hand and just be eager to if you have smaller hands, you have to be a little more tactical. If you have really small hands, you might want to start grabbing fingers here. Up to you. Logically, no matter how well I apply this, Carol can start moving out. This is normal. So what I need to do is provide a counter force to prevent Daryl moving out. Okay? Now, he's being really compliant. 
In a more realistic scenario, in the unlikely case that Daryl ever attacked me this way, <laughs> this follow up would be something wrong with that. So, this is an isolation. Are we clear on this? Don't try this for real. <clears throat> yeah, good job. <laughs> Lastly, my belly button, Daryl's belly button, keep the hands in the center. So while this is quite painful in whichever way you decide to do it, if I bring this off the line of Daryl's belly button and mine, suddenly it becomes somewhere between pointless and embarrassing. Now, if we go over this way, we have options. If we go over this way, we have options as well. But what we're trying to do won't work. So, we want this S shape, this gooseneck shape, push in, basically put a line down his center, but also twist it. And to stop that elbow flaring, push it down. Yes? Now, I'll just show you two other ways to do it quick. You get your basic push, up and under, and pull the whole lot down. Sorry, but be very careful, this one comes on really hard, guys. Like, this is half the atrix, but you know, I am being really careful. And lastly, you grab, brace, and drag the whole lot down. Whatever you're going to do, do it carefully, it's painful. Yes? Go. Hand go, and then look at where it, it does go in the context of this class. So we have this, we have this, for whatever reason this bends up. A lot of the time, you might find it at that edge, as you're there, you move into there, here's some mandibles not working. Stick everything to, sorry, stick everything to your body. So this curtails Daryl's movements to a degree. And as you step out, bend it out. Now you'll notice my body's the one putting pressure on his wrist here. And, and my hand is what's creating the bend. But if Daryl bends his own hand, his own arm, ah! it still works fine. Now. <laughs> so pin this against your body, it works fine. This is absolutely legitimate. From here, let's have a look at something else. So let's say his elbow does flare. As it does flare, we step in, reach all the way around. <laughs> Guys, do this feather light. Because unlike every other lock that we do, Daryl can move out of the way, or Daryl can move away to alleviate the pressure. There is no moving to alleviate the pain or the pressure on this lock. It's horrendous. Hence it's up because devil's gift or devil's hand. So, don't reach to here. Literally go right through. Grab his hand. Make sure you have this position. So make sure basically he has that, that kind of teapot position. Grab over. And bring him back. Yes! It's very unpleasant. Try it. This is important. Try not to eat this, by the way. So this shape is important. If the arm starts to straighten out, you're pretty much lost. Except for that last one. <laughs> um, so, if you want, you can bring this down to the center line. Just put it over his head and cut straight down. But you see how softly I'm doing this? If Daryl needs to, he can flick his hand out of here. Just as a safety thing. Now, in reality, of course. No. <laughs> So, from here, we are here. From here, we put it into this kind of lock number two, if you will. Reach right through as he flares his elbow. Grab there, and bring it back to him. Now, feel free to manipulate your partner, but do it that carefully, please. Okay? Give that a quick shot, and we'll move on to what we're actually doing. Let's say Daryl is canny enough and flicks his finger straight. So instead of having this lovely isolation here, I instead have a slightly less perfect one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a receiver grip, that pad. Again, I've got very big hands, so I can literally envelop all of Daryl's hand, or if I wanted to be cheeky, I could actually do his forearm, that would work fine. Grab it like a sword, point it in his head, and stab it. Okay? So this is something the Aikido would call Sankyo which means third lock. We would call it broken mace. You would see it in the shape of that technique. Push there, we step through. We just want to be in this position, so Daryl needs to be that way. I'm just going to grab his hand and use it. See my body as well, like a sword. And there's the pain there. Now, again, this isn't a perfect lock. This will not hold him all day, but what this does is, this brings me places. So. If I wanted to, I could be bringing it down my straight arm. If I was screwing up too tight, that would flare as it did. I'd lock that in, I'd have this lock there. It goes places. But all we're going to look at at the moment is, from the beginning, one, two. Sorry, that's one. <laughs> two goes to there, okay? I'm going to step, quick stop off in Devil's Gift. From there, 
Just let his fingers point to the floor, <laughs> screw up, and there's that there. And you can't actually move him around with this as well. Aye. And if you're so inclined, feel free to do so. But be careful, because this will flare. If it does flare too much, leave it today, just leave it out, drag it in, and hug it. And then we'll, work, we'll build on that in another day. But from there, if it flares too much, do that. If you start stepping away too much, that's why it's here. Yes. Pull him down. Okay? Note my feet are under me. Note Daryl is off base. This is important. Happy? We'll do this for about two minutes and then start stringing all together. Go. Uh, some of my tempo principles. Kind of drop back, kick. If you're not, if you have a filter line, it's a bit stupid. Here we go. From there, start looking at the various lines. And flow the feet. So, a counter only comes on when a badly done lock. If this lock is watertight, Daryl will not be countering. If not, there is a hole in it, Daryl will. But that's fine. We'll do this very, very slowly and start looking at ways to flow between your locks. One of the smartest ways for Daryl to get out of this when you're wrong is to push out. And if he does, that's fine, we'll back into this. If he decides to flare his elbow up instead, I have choices. Okay? And like I said, from here, feel free, if you want, to be looking at your shoulder locks. If you end up in a position where you're here, he flares out, uh, flare it. Yep. Look at your straight arm locks. Stuff like that. Start flowing between locks. Do it slowly. Because the thing is, pretty much every lock is a slowed down break. So, if Daryl, how many can do that? If I put a lock on and bring the controller that speed, it's going to snap on it. So, literally, as that happens, I'm doing it. Yes? So, start flowing. Go. 